This segment is sponsored by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit SANS.org to learn more. Welcome back, everyone. I want to introduce our very special guest for this segment, a man who has made anonymity a household name, embodies character, (laughs) integrity, principle. People often want to know why he hasn't run for public office. Well, I just told you. A man feared by sushi across the galaxy and drinks Diet Coke only to pee a stream cipher. It's Mr. Ed Scotus. (laughs) Hey, hey, Mr. Paul. Thank you for your very kind introduction. Wow. I'm excited to be here. This is Do you cool. still drink Diet Coke during class? I, I just switched to Coke Zero. Really? Oh, that's nice. interesting. Yeah, How exactly. was that transition for you? It was good. It was good. It actually has less caffeine in it, and I think it yep. tastes better. Really? So, yeah. How are you dealing with the less caffeine, though? Is that we just have more Coke Zero? We just make some for Problem solved. Problem solved. That's very. That's very Ed's go to answer yeah. for that. Yes, it's very nice. Well, it's, it's good to have you back on the show. This is your ninth appearance on the show. Time, it's yeah. so nice to have you here in studio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've been doing a lot of really cool stuff lately. Well, your studio's looking well, thank fantastic. You. Thank you got you. so many things and all the the back rubs from the the interns and stuff. It's fantastic. It's, isn't it fantastic? They have, yeah, their yeah. fingers are magical, aren't that they? That spa is really good too. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, that's what needs awesome. to go in, in you know, around us is like a spa, so we yeah. can get massages before oh, the show. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. That's yeah. not what I remember earlier. <laughs> oh, they've changed it all out. It's great. Yeah. 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 Nice, nice. So, Ed, um, you told me... So, now, when I started thinking about the holidays, I, I'm not thinking about the holidays yet. Yeah. That's the first thing. I'm thinking about how I'm going to get through Black Hat and B-Sides and DEF CON. Derby CON after and that. And then Derby CON yeah. after that. And Busy then times. our 10-year anniversary is going to fall sometime in October. I think October 30th is when we're going to celebrate that. Cool. Um, so Congrats. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. So now, I don't until Halloween hits... I don't think about the holidays, but yeah. you are already thinking about the holidays. Yeah. Why is that? We kind of have to. So we do this holiday hack challenge every year, and uh, we've actually been doing it 11 years now. Um, I love the names. Tell me some of the names. Ed, so, so they're so awesome. Hack challenge. So, so these are all hacking challenges that people work their way through, and uh, we've done uh, Rudolph's Cross-Site Christmas, How the Grinch Hacked Christmas, um, The Year Without a Santa Hack. We did... Um, the Nightmare Before Charlie Brown's Christmas. It's one of my favorites. That's, yeah, that's one of my um, favorites, too. We did, uh, we did It's a Hackerful Life. So it's, it's a Wonderful Life, but right. with, with hackers. Nice. Um, and then last Have year... Have you named... It? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, last year, we did A Christmas Hacking Carol. Nice. So it's a Christmas nice. Carol, but hacking. So have you named this year yet? Yes. What is the naming process like? So we, we don't share the name. You'll find out the name on December 11th when the thing goes live. December 11th, yep, okay. Yep. So, okay. The, so the process works this way. <clears throat> um, I go for a morning walk, and I just try not to think about anything. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, something pops into your head, and it's like magic, right? Um, sometimes uh, we don't get the idea of what we're going to do for the Holiday Hack Challenge until October. So mm-hmm. that, that's normally what happens. And by Halloween, we need an actual theme and then some ideas of technology that goes in there. But this year, we're planning on something bigger and better than we've ever done before. And I had the idea for this one two days after we launched last year's. Yeah. So Sometimes that's the best time to think of. Like, exactly. When you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was crazy. I, I called Josh Wright uh, on the phone. It was two days after we launched Holiday Hack, 2014. And I said, I know what we're going to do next year. And he's like, what are you talking about? Give it a break. We just launched <laughs> this one two days ago. And I, I said, it's, it's, it's going to be this. I mean, we're going to do this and this and this. And uh, he's like, let me think about it for a little while, right? Because it was you know, still last year. And uh, then we started talking about it a little bit in January and February. Mm-hmm. We let it go for a while and realized we got so <clears throat> much stuff we got to build for this thing. It's going to be... You had to start. We're st- we started July 1st. And Josh is building out assets. He and I were talking on the phone today for a couple of hours on how we're going to integrate it all together. We've got a reference architecture for the thing now. Um, but I don't want to intimidate people. We, we write these challenges, these holiday challenges, so that everybody can get into them and start doing stuff, no matter what your skill levels are. Mm-hmm. But we also write them in such a way that, that there's some really cool, elite stuff in them. Um, so it, it's designed to appeal to a broad range of skills. So there are like Easter eggs in them? Oh, the totally full for of the Easter more, eggs. For the more skills. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even, there's even some Easter eggs you know, that, are, that are kind of simpler, too. You'll see references That's to... That's the th- toughest thing about... Game design in general, no matter it what is. kind of game you're designing yeah. like that, it's 
making it so that it's accessible, but also keeping the more advanced. Well, I suppose it designing is. a class is the same kind it of is, thing. It is. It yeah. is. And I've I've long said it's easy to write an easy challenge. Mm -hmm. It's easy to write a hard challenge. What's hard to do is to it's write a easier. challenge that goes across all those different levels of skill right, and expertise. Right, right. Um, so we're, we're building stuff out in July. We're going to be testing it in October, November. And, and this year's one. I'm, I'm so excited about this thing. So I, I can tell you three things that are going to be in it, but I, I can't give you the theme. Okay. You want to hear the three yeah, things? Yeah, 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 I do. So first thing, Internet of Things analysis. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. You've you got your class that's coming right. up on that kind that's of stuff right. and firmware. You should and, come take my class so that you um, can prepare better Dave, for this challenge. It's going to be like so it. cool. So we got, we got some Internet of Things firmware stuff. It's going to be... Um, uh, fantastic wireless analysis. So some cool wireless going on there. And then the and you have Josh working on it. So Josh is working on it. Yeah. He knows a thing or two about wireless. A thing I, I'd use the term pioneer yeah. in, in wireless security. <laughs> yeah. Most amazing wireless hacker I've ever yeah. met. And then the third part is going to be an internet-wide planetary scavenger hunt. Planetary scavenger. Oh, yeah. Hunt. It's wow. going to be pretty cool. That's awesome. So, uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, they're a huge amount of work. We put in hundreds of hours into these things. Um, and and we, we design them as a labor of love. And, and we give them away for free. They're, they're out there. You can download all of the past 11 ones mm -hmm. and do them anytime. So if people want to like practice or build their skills or just have fun, they can look at the 2014 challenge. We, we keep everything online. So uh, in the 2014 challenge... Um, yeah, are there like web servers associated with it? You there are. There's on? actually okay, target yeah. systems, and they're oh. up, and you can hack them right now. In fact, there's uh, for the 2014 one, we had... Um, the ghost of hacking past, mm -hmm. hacking present, and hacking future. And the ghost of hacking past was Alan Turing, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, he right. hacked the Enigma machine. So he visits Scrooge and gives Scrooge an IP address. And you have to hack into that IP address. And it's actually social engineering of an AI bot that Josh Wright built. So that's, oh, that's, that's kind of really cool. cool. And, and, and awesome. it, it's, it's an Eliza bot, a variation that, that mm -hmm. Josh built. And it's still online. So you can go and chat with our Eliza bot anytime you want and try to social engineer. The, the, the ghost of hacking present was, was Johnny Long. Right, Hackers mm -hmm. for Charity. I asked him permission. He, he, he let me do that and put him into the challenge. Um, but he gives Scrooge another IP address, and you have to hack into that one. And it's got a uh, shell shock vulnerability as well as a, a heart bleed vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So if, if any of your listeners have never gotten a chance to exploit shell shock right, or right. heart bleed, we got a system online, <clears throat> 24 by 7 by 365. They can hack into that. Um, and then there's some custom forensics analysis that the ghost of hacking future so wait, challenges you, you to do. <clears throat> you have a system just hanging out there with those vulnerabilities? Yep. And how do you contain... Uh, yes. So, well, we have uh, guys from my team, Josh mm -hmm. Wright and uh, Tom Hessman, have structured this thing in such a way that we kind of wrap you in this little protective, mm -hmm. you know, uh, set of code. Um, for this, when, when Josh was first putting the, uh, the shell shock vulnerability together, I said, we want to give them shell. But we want the narrowest, most restricted shell you can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. But you still have to figure out how to w wiggle around within the straitjacket yeah, yeah, yeah. of that shell right. and make things happen on the box. And it's been pretty, I mean, it's been up now, gosh, eight months. Mm -hmm. And it's still chugging along. Um, it did come down once briefly. And this is not me laying down the gauntlet for, for the viewers to say, hey, please try to bring yeah, down yeah, a yeah, server. Do <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. You don't need to kill it. But, but it's still up there. Mm -hmm. And then the one that we did the year before that, this is really cool. Um, it's, uh, it's a hacker full life. So the idea is um, Bedford Falls, right? Mm -hmm. The city that's in It's a Wonderful Life has been updated. It's now, you know, in present day times. And it's got all these industrial control systems. And the bad guys hack into the industrial control systems. And it's all cyber city. The, the, the actual physical city that we built. Mm -hmm. We give you a 148 megabyte packet capture file. And in there, you get to start exploring and see all of the hacks that the bad guys threw against the industrial control equipment that controls the traffic lights, mm -hmm. controls the water reservoir, and controls the power grid. And all of the hacks that the bad guys threw failed. And you got to figure out why they failed, except for the power grid. The bad guys hack into the power grid and cause a blackout. Mm -hmm. And you got to figure out how that happened. So that's, that's still, you could download the packet capture and start going through that mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, it's, it's a very deep packet capture because there's all these different hacks against all these industrial control equipment pieces. Um, and we've also published answers. So you can go and get, you know, all 11 years worth of these mm -hmm. things. I would recommend people look at stuff over the last two or three or four years. Yeah, going back further is not... Is, you can go back further, yeah. but we try to make them very topical. I mean, mm -hmm. you think the 2014 one had shell shock and heart bleed in it. Why? Because those were two of the biggest yeah. issues of that year. And this year, it's going to be Internet of Things and just really cool. So That's awesome.
That's yeah, awesome. yeah. So it, b about December 10th or 11th, we release it. We release it usually the day before the SANS CDI conference starts. Mm -hmm. um, that's in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in December. And we do it then because, well, first of all, most of us have to go to, to the CDI conference, to teach. Yeah. But also, we hope that people at the conference, will there'll be some buzz and people mm -hmm. start talking about, hey, did you see this and look at that? Um, they're fun to do. And, and the idea is we give people until the first Monday, the first like business Monday of January mm -hmm. to submit their answers. So, you know, it, it goes out December 20th. Usually it's J January 6th or 7th that the responses come in. So you got three or four weeks. So if you have an extra hour or two or an extra you, day. A lot of people are on break or holidays. Yeah, so you find some exactly. time to. Well, I mean, we, we were, we're kicking it around saying, what if, what if we move the holiday hack challenge and like launched it in July? Would people be able to do that? Well, they'd be on vacation. Mm -hmm. They're probably not going to spend their vacation working on our stuff. Right. So I think it fits really nicely where it is. I think so too. When, when we first started doing this, I was doing one a month, and it had all these different movie themes. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I did a, a Star Hacks based on Star Wars. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah all the, all what that was your stuff. first one? The very first one I did was called Face Off, mm -hmm. and it was, remember that Nicolas Cage, John Travolta yes. movie? Yes. Yeah. That was the very first one that I did, and it was a system that kind of behaved like Linux and kind of behaved like Windows, um, so that was why it was mm -hmm. Face Off. Uh, I did one based on the Princess Bride movie. Um, did a whole bunch of these different ones on different movies, but I couldn't keep up the pace once a month mm -hmm. at the quality and depth that yeah, we wanted yeah. to do. So Unless we, that's all you were doing. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, I, and we give them away. So yeah, this is not yeah, like yeah, yeah. A, a big business opportunity here. We do it for fun. We do it because it's, it's just so great to see people working through this mm -hmm. stuff. So we, we kind of backed off. And we do them once per year, just like Santa Claus, right? That's true. I mean, he apparently used to deliver gifts all the time. Now, once a year. Once so, a year. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, we look forward to that, Ed. I'm so excited about <clears> it. Um, now, you uh, run a company that essentially is centered around doing these types of challenges and that's right. And such. Yep, yep. Uh, the company's called Counterhack, and we write a whole bunch of challenges and uh, distribute them all through SANS. And I currently have uh, nine people working full time at the company. Uh, we have a 10th coming up in a space of about three weeks. Mm -hmm. And these people spend most of their time working on these challenges. There's the holiday hack. Of course, that's a big, big one that we do. But also things like net wars and cyber city and such. We also do information security consulting work. Mm -hmm. We do pen tests. And, and we try to do pen tests of very interesting, innovative stuff. Mm -hmm. Like where you have mobile meeting Internet of Things, meet, meeting cloud with web and network. Because we want to do those projects to learn. It's interesting. That's, that's a lot. So many things now, and it's very Again, scary. Yeah. I'm glad it's that cool. people are working on pen testing, that kind of All stuff. All that stuff merges. Yeah. We, we do the pen test of that stuff, and then we take what we learn, and we make it into challenges. Mm -hmm. right? Because if, if we were to just do challenges, I think we'd grow stale yeah. and, and not really model what's happening in the real world. So we do the pen test stuff. It's not a main focus of our company, but we do the pen test stuff so that we, could, so that we can stay fresh. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So. I love that coming together of mobile, cloud, Internet of Things, it, web app security. You know, web app, I mean, that's really, when we say Internet of Things, yes. I talk about this in my presentation when you give it besides uh, Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. It's really a melding of all of those different technologies. It totally is. And it's very frightening from a security you perspective. You want to hear the crazy stuff, though? I mean, I don't want to <clears> scare <throat> anything, but so we're doing pen tests of toys. Right, so there's, there's these toys and there's you know, little action figures and they shoot each other and they're connected to the cloud. It's, it's, it's really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So my, my team's been working uh, for many months doing pen tests of these toys, Internet of Toys. But the technologies being used by the toys are the same technologies that are being used in military weapon systems. Right? It's all various forms of wireless. It's all various forms of TCP IP. Mm -hmm. It's chipsets and firmware. The same techniques that you can use to hack toys today are the same techniques that you can use to hack military weapons. This is a crazy world we've built, but the skills that we're learning in hacking toys can be directly applied to writing challenges that can be used to attack infrastructure or mm -hmm. defend infrastructure or military stuff. It's, it's con I mean, people have been talking about convergence for, what, 15, 20 years. Yeah, that's but, interesting. But with cloud, with embedded devices, mm -hmm. with mobile, with all the different wireless protocols, we live, I mean, Internet of Things is, is what we call convergence today. It is. Right? It absolutely is. And the protocols are all converging, too. Oh, yeah. Think about how everyone now has a JSON or XML RPC yep. interface and yep. API. And yep. that's, 
essentially a web application. It totally <laughs> is. And then they're distributing, you know, clients to all these devices, mm -hmm. um, you know, like your, your phone, your tablet, your wristband or watch mm -hmm. or whatever. And um, all the different wireless protocols that are spoken on that. Obviously, there's, there's Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth, but now Bluetooth Low Energy, mm -hmm. um, Zigbee, Zigbee near-field communication. Mm -hmm. This is, it's amazing the attack surfaces that are opened up. Um, you could get kind of freaked out about it, a little frightened about it. I try to get myself excited about it, so focus on the sort of the, the mm. energy on the positive stuff, right. saying what can we do here to, to really understand this, to explore it, to hack it, right? Yeah. We're, we're hackers, but also help make it more secure, you know? Yeah, because yeah. there's so many different layers. Of, like, Vericode released a report, and they talked about the different uh, software security la or c communications protocol kind of things, mm -hmm. and they looked at that like, this device doesn't talk SSL when it does this other thing. Yeah. That's just like one component right. of this whole, all these series of technologies that talk to each other. So, you know, I try to maintain my excitement about this. You know, this is, this is cool mm -hmm. stuff. This is very fun. Sometimes, though, I do get a little bit you know, depressed. And I think, is it possible that, that in building this world that we've created. If you want to call it cyberspace, you can. I know cyber, right? Drink. 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 Yep, Everybody cyber. drink. Yeah. All right, cyber. Mm -hmm. So in mm -hmm. building cyberspace, um, maybe humanity has created something that we can't secure. We might just, I don't, I don't know if we have it in us as a species to be able to actually secure something of the complexity that we've built. And, and will it grow artificial intelligence and then attack us, and then we're all being used for... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I saw a movie, a movie on that movie one time. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great for a screenplay. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I th and the thing of it is, even if we could secure what we call cyberspace now, it's changing so fast that we can't in the future. So that could be a little bit depressing, or you Like could a robot goes back in time and then tries to take out the person It should look like a bodybuilder. Oh, that was yeah, a, yeah, yeah, that was a movie too. No? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, 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 I want to chime in on that just, just briefly. And, and yes, just Mr. Chuff. Somewhat of a specific example, not a, not a direct specific example. No names, no names named. Um, but, you know, we've done several uh, web apps this year where we do mobile as well um, as we're testing. And it's amazing how much opportunity has been opened up by... Um, for instance, an input vulnerability on a mobile application that ends up becoming a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability back on the web app that's dealing with the same API. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just an example of this this crossover that we're seeing, where people are saying, "Oh yeah, we secured that for the browser platform, but you didn't secure it for the mobile platform," or "We secured that for the mobile platform, but we didn't secure it for the browser platform." And right. we, it, they're not thinking about the crossover aspects of, of the Internet of Things. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and you'll have a data feed coming in from one source with one application. It's put into a database, and then there's other applications that use that sh same data, mm -hmm. and they're vulnerable to the cross-site scripting flaw or some other kind mm -hmm. of injection flaw. Um, it's, I mean, it's exciting times, right? It, it, it is. Good, it's good times. It's, it's, it, the explosion in diversity is what's creating this unbelievably complex challenge that you're talking about, Ed. Yeah. And it's... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't quite know how we're going to get through it, but it's good times for us. Hack all the things. Yeah. That's Hack, right. Hack all the things. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's some of what Cyber City is all about. Sure, sure. So, so the idea of Cyber City was uh, to take all the stuff that we've learned in doing our holiday hack challenges, in building Net Wars. Right, Net Wars is is this big cyber simulation mm -hmm. with all these different challenges that you can do in it. But to take all those ideas and to move them into uh, where they touch the physical realm. The military people call it kinetic, right? Mm -hmm. So it was to, to do, again, I'll use the word cyber, cyber and kinetic and where the two meet. And we built a range out of that. That's, uh, it's six feet by eight feet. It's a table. Mm -hmm. And on the table are little buildings and uh, street lights and traffic lights. Um, there's a train that moves around. There's a water reservoir and all this kind of stuff on top of the table. Under the table are all the industrial control systems that control what's on top of the table. Are they like midgets working little strings? Yes, my team. Is, I, I mentioned we're nine people. Some of them are very, very tiny. Uh, <laughs> actually, actually, so the, the team built all the stuff underneath the table. And it, it, it kind of, you know, they, they actually they run it from, from the secret room. I've got an operations team now. Yeah. And uh, they, they run all of the stuff in CyberCity uh, from the secret room. 
and uh, they, they, they make it all work. And, and people engage in missions in CyberCity. Mm -hmm. So, so NetWars is organized around the concept of a challenge. Like, here's something that you need to do, hack into this machine and capture this flag, or analyze this packet capture and figure mm -hmm. out the, the answer to this challenge. So that's NetWars, challenge-oriented. CyberCity is mission-oriented, where it starts out with a mission briefing, you have to achieve some kinetic effect or stop terrorists from doing mm -hmm. horrible things in the city. They try to poison the water. They try to hack into the traffic lights and cause mayhem. They cause power outages. Y y you got to defend against that. So the, it starts with a mission briefing, and then you walk through a whole series of steps to finish your mission. And we have 19 missions right now mm -hmm. in uh, CyberCity. Um, and is CyberCity like networks where I can sign up for it and be... A participant in CyberCity? So, or? so we do run CyberCity in, in a couple of different ways. Um, we have a few special events that we do every year mm -hmm. where we'll do at a SANS conference a night of CyberCity. Uh, we're going to be doing one and at... You, you don't bring the table with you. No, no. This is all remote access. We thought oh, we, yeah. could, we could get a lot more realism if we give you streaming video. And there's five cameras on CyberCity. So you... I remember Josh asking me for camera recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you chose our cameras, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty Excellent. cool. They're great cameras. They're oh, working good. wonderfully for us. Out for you. So we got five uh -oh. cameras on the action. And people will go to like a SANS event where we do CyberCity. We have it... Uh, like one night during the evenings, and then you're assigned a mission. Terrorists are trying to do a denial of service flood mm -hmm. against the airport to, so that aircraft can't land safely. You got to fight through the denial of service and stop that from happening. Or terrorists have you know issued their demands, or there's going to be a blackout. You got to make sure that the lights stay on. That kind of stuff. So uh, we'll be doing it at Hackfest, which is. So do I get like a VPN connection into Cyber City? It's SSH. Okay. So you get in via SSH tunnels, mm -hmm. and then you have full access to all the different hmm. piece parts of the city. And uh, we're going to do it, it's the week before Thanksgiving at the SANS Pentest Hackfest. Um, and we do it at a couple other SANS events uh, per year. We also, we have a class. It's called SANS Security 562. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a SANS six-day class. Um, and the first five days, you go through missions um, in the class itself. And we offer this, you know, three, four times a year at SANS. So you go through 15 missions in the first five days. So about three missions per day. Mm -hmm. And the sixth day is really pretty cool. Because in the sixth day, you're on a team, and it's red-blue. So your team has both a red side and a blue side. Mm -hmm. Another team is given another sector of the city. So you get a part of the city, the other team gets a part of the city, and your job is to defend your part mm -hmm. from their attacks and attack them. So you, it's, it's your, your team is playing red and blue simultaneously. Pretty, yeah. So is theirs. And th the neatest thing is we integrated the scoreboard with the CyberCity power grid. So the more well-lit your side is, mm -hmm. the, the better you're doing from a score perspective. And if the other side's kind of, their, their, their lights aren't on, it's, it's because you're winning. So, uh, That's so pretty an, cool. an integrated power grid with scoreboard is, as far as I know, it's the first, first time anybody's done that kind of thing. So, uh, so anyway, that's what CyberCity is. We also offer CyberCity a lot um, for, for what SANS calls on-sites or kind of mm -hmm. like private events. And we do a lot of those for the military. We just did one in, uh, it was in March, where we did one for the National Guard. Mm -hmm. And we had um, teams of 10. So there were 24 states, each with 10 people that are, that are National Guard folks. Um, and they got access into CyberCity, and they had to fight off the bad guys and defend the infrastructure. And it was, it was just, it was amazing, beautiful to see all of these folks in their, their uniforms, right? These mm -hmm. are National Guard soldiers in their uniforms working on CyberCity. You can see all the streaming video and such behind them. I was, I was so honored to, to be able to participate in that. That's 240 cool. people went through CyberCity in the space of a week, and it was really neat. So, That's really cool. Yeah. So what kind of devices are, are these, like, actual SCADA devices? Yep, yep. Uh, in CyberCity, we have a mixture of, uh, we have some Phoenix Contact devices. Mm -hmm. Phoenix Contact is used for a variety of things, but it's especially used in uh, the, the, the water industry. Mm -hmm. um, we have Allen Bradley devices, which are used for all kinds of stuff, including power distribution. And then we have Siemens devices, which mm -hmm. are used for all kinds of things, especially power distribution. Right. So we have a mixture of those three kinds of SCADA systems. And then there's some additional kinds of things that control various aspects of the city as well, uh, distributed throughout. And uh, you know, on my team, I've got uh, Tom Van Norman. He's one of the best SCADA security guys I've ever met. He, he actually, last year, he ran the, um, the ICS Village at DEF CON. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't working for me at the time. Um, but I went to that ICS Village. Did you go there at DEF CON? Uh, no, I did not. It was, it was awesome. It was amazing. It was really cool. So he was one of the guys that set it up. There were other people mm -hmm. that worked with him on that, like Atlas and, and, and some other friends. Mm -hmm. uh, Don Weber was very involved and such. And, and they built out, this was the first year, for the ICS Village, 
and it was so cool. And, and at the time, we were on our team thinking, we need, we need a really good ICS person that, that can work on building more ICS missions for us. And then it hit me, we should hire Tom Van Norman. So he joined the team in September of last year, mm -hmm. and he's building out missions. Tim Medin is building out yep. missions. Josh Wright is building missions. Jeff McJunkin. Um, I got Tom Hessman. You remember Tom? He's been working for me for like 10 years now. Yes, yes. And uh, so he's vetting all of the missions. We got an another guy, uh, Daniel Pendolino. He's vetting all the missions. These guys are, uh, it's, it's really cool to see him work on these missions. It's hard, though. I mean, to build a mission that, you know, functions and doesn't catch on fire and stuff is pretty hard. We had, we had a problem with our train mission. Because what happens is the bad guys. Yeah, there have been like physical Things that have oh, yeah. happened, like oh, yeah. that, caused danger or well, excitement. First or issue. <laughs> first issue is the train could fly off the tracks, right? I mean, there's this whole you yeah. know, inertia thing. All right, so we can manage that. But what 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 happens is the bad guys are trying to hack into the train controller. It's a SCADA mm -hmm. system that controls the switching on the train, and you know if they they switch it too fast. Um, it starts to heat up. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this uh, very complicated principle in electrical engineering such that if you have an electrical system and the magic smoke gets out, it doesn't work anymore. So the goal is to <laughs> keep the magic smoke. I'm sorry if I'm getting too you know, deep in this. But it's keep crazy the, complaint. Complicated. Right, keep the magic smoke keep in. Keep the magic smoke in. We were not doing that. We, they were <laughs> and it would, it would melt the stupid little switches. They, they <laughs> it's not like a laser printer that has some physical thing that says if it gets too hot, shut it off. No. Yeah. So, so it's we, not that advanced. So I think, I think in a week we went through like six of these things and we kept <laughs> melting them and then the smoke would come out of them. But, you know, that's a bit of a concern because you don't want to burn the whole thing down. Right. So I did have sprinklers installed mm -hmm. um, <laughs> just in case. We hope the sprinklers never go off. Right. Were um, they SCADA sprinklers? No, yeah. no, they're actually... <laughs> Wait, are those in play? That's a great question, Chris. <laughs> the sprinklers are an out-of-game asset. <laughs> and they're not SCADA controlled. I, we did look into it. They're yeah. entirely controlled via heat and water pressure. Right. So, yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Hey, so, so, Ed, I'm really curious... Um, are the manufacturers working with you now that you have gone through all this and, and, and got so much development in terms of vulnerabilities and, and everything? Are they starting to work with you actively? We, we have been very fortunate in the manufacturers' um, openness and acceptance. Because, um, you know, they could, they could be kind of freaked out. I mean, you're teaching people how to hack this stuff. Yeah, but we're also teaching people how to defend this stuff. That's right. important. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've had great interactions with and great support from the vendors. That said, we're also their customers. We're paying for the products. They're not giving them to us for free. Mm -hmm. We're buying them because we, you know, we, we don't want to be treated extra special or anything like that. We're buying these pieces, deploying them, configuring them. Um, Heating them up so that the <laughs> magic smoke comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I have to say the vendors, I've been contacted by each of their security teams, and they're cool. They say if you have any questions, anything, let us know. And they're also... Very curious. What the heck are you doing with this stuff? Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's been good. Good question. Yeah. <clears throat> Is how you're using some of these SCADA devices like in scope for that device or out of scope for that device? I can imagine they're asking the question. It's like, sure. wait, how are you using we're, this? We're trying to deploy them with typical normal configuration that you'd see in an actual use yeah. case. The issue is, though, when they get hacked, I mean, the whole goal of, of hacking and manipulating mm -hmm. these things is to push them outside of that use case. So that's where things get a little bit wonky, and it is possible somebody could actually physically break the SCADA system or the thing that it's actually controlling on top of the table. Um, we, we've tried to architect our missions around that. You know, mm -hmm. you want survivability. You want concurrency in mission development. Um, that said, we have all of the configurations uh, backed up to compact flash mm -hmm. or SD cards, depending on the particular model of the SCADA system, so that we could go back to that. Um, we are using physical, real SCADA systems. There are virtualization options that are available for that. Mm -hmm. We went with real because it gives a pretty faithful yeah. implementation. Um, but we're looking at maybe doing some virtual SCADA systems, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We haven't done that yet. Now we're all on real stuff. So is there actual flowing water? There's not. Okay. That was something, one of our customers, a military customer, mm -hmm. insisted that there be a mission where the bad guys try to contaminate the water. That was really important for mm -hmm. us to model. And, you know, our initial thought was, okay, we're going to have water, and then we got to make it look different, like maybe inject red dye into mm -hmm. it. But then how do you get the dye out? And then I remembered, you know, when I was in high school, you do those titration experiments where you yeah. inject the stuff in and yeah. it would turn pink and yeah, yeah, yeah. acid base and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, how are we going to mix that up? And what happens? 
this is going to be a mess. And then there's this other problem with electrical equipment. If you get it wet, yes. it, it, does, it gets angry, right? <laughs> well, so, and then you have another problem if there's stagnant water without oh. being treated or... Yeah, yeah it, it, like, it would turn green and yeah, smell. Yeah, rots yeah. and it's bad. So, um, so we actually thought about this for like two months. Two months, how are we <laughs> going to do this? And then the answer is so obvious. We just uh, use your pool in your backyard. Yeah, it's just a pool. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to swim in it sometime. You might get electrocuted, but it'll be yeah, it's awesome. totally fine. <laughs> it might be poison. You know. <laughs> it's the simplest thing. We've got like a piece of plastic. It's just a little rippling piece of plastic. And underneath it, Josh Wright put some LEDs that yeah. shine. And when you look at the thing with your eyeballs, it, it looks, looks like water. Well, it looks like a piece of plastic with little lights on it. <laughs> but if you look at it through the camera, if you know the streaming video camera, yeah. it looks freaking awesome. <clears throat> it, 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 it looks good on camera. And frankly, because nobody comes to Cyber City, it's all done across mm -hmm. the internet, what really matters is how it looks on camera. So... So, so, so on camera, it looks like an LED with some plastic on top? No, no, it actually <laughs> no, no, looks good. Okay. It looks like a water reservoir that's lit up. And, uh, and then to inject the poison, you turn the lights red? We change the colors. Yeah. Exactly. We do any color. We, we, you know, usually we do sort of this sickly yellow, reddish. Right. You don't want to drink that water. And then blue means it's good water. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I, I can't believe for two months we were trying to struggle with how do we deal with water inside the city. And then it's just like, it's so obvious once it's you lights. figure it out. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, and, and I would totally turn it yellow and be like, who <laughs> peed in my pool? <laughs> yeah, my yeah. pool is called an ool. An ool. There's, there's no, no pee, pee in, in it. it. Nice. Right. Nice. And, and now we're looking at it scaling up. So it's our, our next big adventure. So what's like the next kind of thing? It sounds like you so, have traffic lights, trains, oh, yeah. the water thing, power. Yeah. yeah so, so right now we've built out the Cyber City stuff itself mm -hmm. in miniature. And we got all these different missions. And... and some of our customers, military folks. They want a nuclear reactor in Cyber City. That has come up. <laughs> and, and, I, and unfortunately, I, the, the building codes in my city are know, down. It's, yeah, it's exactly. We're, we're not going to be doing a nuclear reactor, although I have had discussions with people about how you could simulate that and yeah. put little Geiger counters. In the, but there, there's no actual radiation. Yeah. We're not actually going down that path. Instead, what we're doing now is we're repurposing a lot of our infrastructure to create new missions. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you know, we've got these Lego blocks. Right. We built and these you can, yeah. And I can shift it around and do other very compelling missions that are different. So you could take a mission that before was very red mm -hmm. and now write a blue component to it or vice versa. And you can shift things around, different adversaries. We have some of our Is missions. There, like, I want to see like gaseous clouds or like, like some kind of smoke, not from burning electrics, but yeah. like some way to make like smoke or We're, so, so steam or the, not steam, the team vapor. Has, you could exactly. use a vape device. Like exactly. A, yeah, that's exactly what the team yeah. is. They're, they're trying to convince me of this. The idea is to have... Oh, so I'm not the only one that's to see smoke. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so, so you have like a smokestack or, or yeah. maybe a cooling tower from a, a nuclear facility and they want to take, you know, an e-cig, yeah. uh, just put water vapor in it so no nicotine or whatever and then have it smoke out the top. My worry is if you do that for 10 hours, it'll look great on camera. I have no yeah. doubt about that. But if you do it for 10 hours, is it going to increase humidity, and will that lower the lifespan of some of the electrical equipment? My team insists no. Um, yeah, I, I'm I more know. worried about your vape device running out of battery or coil or something. Yeah. There's, there's, it's a consumable kind of thing. Like, those coils don't last forever. So they could, they could catch fire. You would have Ooh. to replace the coils. You lost me at fire. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They do. If you ever see... It, dude, it turns glowing red hot. Does it really? Yeah. Uh, glowing okay. red hot. Right, like, so. they're not meant to be fired continuously. Yeah, because that's so what we'd want. It's something we could do eight or ten it, hours. No, of. no, that so, would be bad. So we're, we're looking at others. The, the, the thing, like, in a model train that makes smoke, yeah, that's what is sooty. That? It, it actually leaves... It, oh, really? Yeah, I didn't it, know that. Uh, okay. Residu it, uh, residue. Residue, yeah. And, uh, but because it's so small, it's not a... Yeah, it's, it's usually fine because a guy will run the train for 10 minutes just to start somebody else. But we've got something that uh, has to support a right. lengthy class or, or mission engagement. Right. So, so we're looking at that. We, you know, all these ideas have come up. We want to you know, start modeling. Perhaps uh, we've got some cell towers in mm -hmm. the city and, and modeling cellular communications, different forms of wireless. So, so are there cell towers today? They're just physical little cell towers. Okay. They're not actually transmitting yet. But oh, we're looking at how we can start yeah, modeling I those missions and... And, and then the, the, the coolest thing is to take the lessons that we've learned in building out Holiday Hack Challenges, Net Wars, in Cyber City, mm -hmm. and um, scaling them up to life-size. So we're, we're actually now designing life-size missions um, on behalf of some military folks. So that oh, I was going to say, you haven't like, gone into your backyard and started building a full no, scale no, not yet. No, model. No, it, <laughs> there's, a, there's actually a military base uh, in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. It's 1,000 acres. 
and uh, they, they do military training on it right now. It's actually a city. Mm -hmm. It's a physical city, but right now it has no cyber missions in it. So they go there and they train on, on shooting and, and, and you know, various things tactical like that. Situations. Yeah, tactical yeah. situations, uh, flash bombs, go and you know, pull mm -hmm. the hostages out, that kind of stuff. Um, they pump sweaty ball sweat smells into the place. It's, you told me about that. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so they had this thing. And we, we, I went on a tour there back in October. And we're walking around, and you hear machine gun fire as you're walking around. Um, and they're not actually using actual machine gun. Instead, what it is is it's, it's sound. Mm -hmm. Just playing through speakers, as well as they use um, simunition, where it's 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 you rubber, know rubber like bullets. rubber bullets. Yeah. yeah, and apparently it really hurts if you get hit with them. But there's also explosions, so you're walking around the city and you hear all these different sounds. And we go there, and the guy's taking us on the tour. And there's this box mounted on the wall. It's about like that big, and it's making sound, so you can hear. And you see the sound coming out of the speaker on it. But next to the speaker is this other kind of strange device. And you think, what's that? And the guy says, well, that's a smell emitter. A smell emitter? He's like, yeah. And then he says very proudly, he says, that thing can generate anything from fresh baked apple pie to rotting human corpses. And he said it like he was so proud. It's like, oh, okay. They've got 500 streaming video cameras. See, we have five in Cyber City. They've mm -hmm. got 500 there. They have UAV fly rights. Um, and uh, Tom mm -hmm. Van Norman, he's the SCADA guy mm -hmm. that, that, that works on the team. Um, he is working now on designing missions for this. Um, and the, the neat thing about it is you can integrate boots on the ground mm -hmm. forces with cyber forces so that they can work together to achieve right. objectives. So, so, you know, we built Cyber City so that people could practice hacking industrial control equipment and see the physical effects, but that's all in miniature. Mm -hmm. The reason that you would build this thing in full size is so that you can have the integration of the, the full size military participants so, with the cyber guys. So we know, is your mission to launch off of a motorcycle, do a flip, take out the guards, and then use NMAP with an SSH exploit to take out the power station? <laughs> it's got to be NMAP. <laughs> and, and yes, I am going to wear the uh, the leather. leather, oh, yeah. leather? Yeah. 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 That's, that's pretty much what I'm aiming for. Yeah. Yeah. You called it. You I called can it. see that. So, so it, it's, it's fun Ed stuff. Leather. What's that, Joe? Yeah, Ed's going to be in leather in the future. I, I'm, <clears throat> I don't know. Having a vision. It's <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is, I mean, the stuff that we're, we're uh, able to work on, it's, it's uh, you know, sometimes I, I think back and it's like, wow, it just blows my mind that, that we have the good fortune. I mean, anybody that does information security should, should pause every once in a while to think, look at what we get to do for a living. And, and sometimes I'll even do this. I, I think about talking to my 10-year-old self. You ever, you ever think about talking to little 10-year-old no, Paul? Um, no. I, let me process that for a minute. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are still 10, but, right? but, but I think about going... Yeah, I, so that's just like talking to myself. Exactly. Then. It's the yeah, same okay. thing. But, but for some of us, you go to that little 10-year-old. He was Eddie. Eddie Scotus. That's when I was 10, I went by Eddie. And I sometimes think of talking to Eddie Scotus and saying, do you realize when you grow up, people are going to hack or pay you to hack them? And that's actually going to be a job. This would have blown my mind. I mean, mm. oh my, you're serious? Yep, you're going to do that. Wow. So I, I think InfoSec people should, should tell themselves about how cool it is what we're able to do. So if you're a cyber defender, if you're a digital forensics expert, I mean, if your job is to manage firewalls, that's really cool. I mean, seriously. Um, I mean, look, I like pen testing. That's my thing. That's, that's fun. But all those other cybersecurity jobs, you're helping to make the world a more safe and secure place. There's a huge demand. I mean, we saw Tenables hiring 60-some mm -hmm. security engineers. There's huge demand for, for our kind of skills doing great stuff to help make the world more secure. That's really beautiful. That's so. cool. Uh, <coughs> Ed, was there anything else you wanted to... We, I think we covered everything yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Do you want to do five questions again? I'm happy to do five questions. Okay. I haven't prepared for it, so I'm just going to make okay. this up. Three words to describe yourself. Weird. Busy and daddy. Who's your daddy? Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I like being a dad to my kids. We have Absolutely. fun with the kids. It's, yeah. it's a great thing. That's, yeah. that's a fun job, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Ed's Magical Mystery Tour. Uh, let's see. If I read them out of order. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Serial. Yeah, I just made that up. That's, I no, that's, a, that's a good one. Fair enough. Uh, Probably Raisin Bran can do some real damage in, in yeah. large doses. <laughs> like, sure. yeah. like, you ever eat Raisin Bran and it goes down the wrong way oh, when it's man. dry? It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. It's yeah, rough. Yeah. In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? I think I would like to go second. Um, 
because it, you have more time to interpret who went first and then respond in an appropriate way. So I think second. Or better. inappropriate way. That's true. That's what works. That's true. Choose two celebrities to be your parents. I don't think you've answered this question before. This is like I a new one. Yeah. No, this is um, Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> I don't know why. It just popped into my head. And uh, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> we got the Angelina Jolie question. I had to, yeah, I had to go <laughs> the answer, yeah. rather. That's perennial favorite. Perennial favorite. It is not? a perennial yeah. favorite. That's right. Good. Yes. Well, thank you, Ed. It's, uh, it's going to stick around. We're going to uh, take a short break. Come right back and talk about stories for the week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Stories. <laughs> 